Well, I'm on a roll. New Year's Eve. Uh, this one's going to blow your mind. Uh, a lot of people don't even talk about this. But uh, it, it, it it's really is. It's a presupposition. Okay? You and I presuppose certain things. And so when we read through Scripture, each one of those things is presupposed based on our premise, our paradigm, the way we view and think things. Okay? So what I'm asking you to do now is to think outside the box. To think outside of your box that you're thinking. Because some people have never ever thought of this until you uh, until you're faced with it, I guess. Until somebody like me brings it up. Okay? Um, I'm going to take these apart here so I don't get them mixed up. Everlast <coughs> Everlasting. I want to ask you a question here. People say they believe in the inerrant infallibility of the Holy Scripture. That all Scripture is breathed of God. Do you believe that? Do you believe when you read the Bible, do you read the Bible and say, see, this is what it says? I'm going to challenge you. I bet you you don't in this area. I'm going to, I'm going to test you, okay? Yet you will reject the words in Scripture if they do not line up with your presupposition. You hold to certain beliefs, and so did I. Until I studied it out, I want to see what Scripture says, and not what I think it says. Genesis 6.6 6. And the Lord regretted, or pondered, that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Genesis 22.12 and God said, Do not lay your hand on the boy. This is Abraham and Isaac when they're about he's about ready to kill his son of sacrifice, as God told him. God said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son for me. What do you think of those scriptures? This is where I'm going to test you. People are taught that God lives in a straight line. People are taught that God lives outside of time. He lives in a straight line. Past, present, and future. He runs back and forth from the future. He sees the future. He works with you in the present. He goes back to the past. Oh, he, he has to go back to the past. To, anyway, I'm going to get smart on some of this stuff. But, uh, but that's the thing. People believe that God lives outside of time. Why would he breathe out these words if he knew ahead of time what was going to happen? People, now these, I'm going to get you some points, so hang with me, okay? It's going to take some time. People cannot trust a God who does not know the future. People are insecure with that. God's got to know the future. How can he know everything if he doesn't know the future? How can he do that? See, these are things that people are constantly hitting me with. They say that I'm trying to put him in a box. I'm trying to rationalize and figure him out. You're doing the same thing. You're saying he can't predict the future. He's not big enough or strong enough to create 400 years ago to have a prediction and have it come to pass without seeing it in his little crystal ball. Now think about this, guys. What does Hebrew, the Hebrew word for everlasting mean? The word everlasting in the Hebrew is 128 times in the Old Testament. The Strong's Concordance has two different things for it. It's 5703 and 5769. It, the concordance says perpetuality, continuous or perpetual duration, perpetual duration. The thing that I use as an example is a nuclear submarine. They say a nuclear submarine with the atoms and stuff, it could go on through eternity without having to be refueled. 
perpetual duration. He's continuously going. Time, now listen to this, now listen to this. Time is man's means to measure. Man's means to measure. What is time? Time is a moment by moment succession of moments. I started a sentence. I ended a sentence. That gives you a measure of time. I shared this with a friend. If you get in a spaceship right now and you fly up to the sun, you fly to the sun, there's no days and nights. There's no seasons. If you didn't have a clock in your spaceship, what would you determine time to be? See? One of the things years ago, when I was dealing with some of this stuff, the Holy Spirit is like, I was, I was in Genesis and it says, I separated days from nights. I separated days from nights, or nights from days, I can't remember which it is. I separated days from nights. It's like, Lord, I, I, I'm kind of stumped here. Why do you word it that way? How do you separate days from nights? And <laughs> a still soft voice. Rotation. Rotation. It's simple, Marty, to separate days and nights. I start the planetary system in a rotation. That's how we get days and nights. I set it all up on a time sequence. I got the moon. I got the moon in sequence. I got the whole thing set up in a sequence. I separated days and nights. People go, oh, that's what he created time. That's not what he said. He said he separated days and nights. Let's go to Acts 17, 26 and 28. Acts 17, 26 and 28. This is important. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God. See right here, we're seeking God, not him seeking us. That they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. Okay, page two. I gotta write page two down. Colossians 1 16 through 17. Hang in there with me, guys. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In him all things hold together. Hebrews 1.3, he, Jesus, is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. Jesus is God. It's the exact imprint. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. Man teaches that God cannot prophesy the future accurately without seeing the future first. When you say that God lives outside of time, you're saying that he can't prophesy something without seeing it. My, oh, I already said about the submarine thing. Here's something people throw at me all the time. Many use one day is as a, a thousand years to the Lord. One day is as a thousand years to the Lord. He's doing a comparison. When you get in the, in the Hebrew text and read it out, he's it, just comparing it. Uh, it doesn't matter to him if it's one day or a thousand years. Well, I, I'm eternal. I'm always going to go. God is in a circular type motion. Is that, is that is the way I'm describing it for people? If God lives outside of time, based on your thinking, if God lives outside of time, Jesus is still dead on the cross. Lucifer is still in heaven. Ah, if he can see the future and what's happening, he can see the past and thus it changed. But no, Jesus is risen. It's a done deal. 
Yesterday is over with. You'll never ever get yesterday again. But tomorrow he hasn't created it. Remember when it says in the Bible, and I didn't look this one up for the, the, the place, but he says, the Father has not revealed to the Son when the end times are, or when the end days are. Because he hasn't made up his mind, he hasn't decided. He hasn't told them because he doesn't know what he wants to do. Let's keep going, follow me, hang in there. 2 Kings 20, verse 5 and 6. 2 Kings 20, verse 5 and 6. This is serious. This is serious. Turn back, Isaiah. Because Isaiah just told King Hezekiah, you're going to die, dude. You're going to die. And Hezekiah goes, and he, he turns his face to the wall, and he's grieved in his heart. And he said, and so Hezekiah, God says to Isaiah, and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of, the, of David, your father, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. Was he joking? Oh, I already seen he's going to do it. He's already, no, 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 this outside of time crap is wrong. It's all man's teaching. The Bible says he heard his prayers and God added 15 years. That's what it says. That's what it says. Your presupposition is wrong. We live and move in him. Um, just like here, yeah, Hebrews 9.27, it says we're appointed once to die. People go, see, everybody has a certain time they have to die. That's not what it says. He's talking about back in Genesis 6.3. Genesis 6.3, it says, I appointed men to die for 120 years. He put a time limit on man's thing. And yes, I know some people live to be 120, 30. But see, your whole presupposition, when you believe that God's outside of time, then when you're going to die, God can't do nothing about it. Because that's your scheduled time to go. Here, it's not. God lives in time. It, there is no time. We, we live in Him. We, we live in Him and move and have our being. Our prayers are effects Him. There's the Father heart of God. He added 15 years to the guy's life. Nothing in the text states that God knew ahead of time that he would repent. Do you believe that your prayer affects God's decision? Oh, yes, it does, Marty. Well, no, not according to you living outside of time. It already is that thing. If God knew ahead, then the scripture lies that the Father heart of God is just missing, misleading people, his people, if he lives outside of time. Here's one, Jeremiah 19.5. Jeremiah says, burn their sons, no, this is God speaking to Jeremiah, burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or decree, nor did it come into my mind. Do you believe what the Bible says? God said it didn't come into my mind that they'll actually burn their own kids. They'll kill their own kids. And never crossed my mind. Is he lying? See how important this is, guys? It affects the character of God and what he's doing, what he can do. Jeremiah 32, 35. <clears throat> to offer up their sons and daughters to Moloch, though I did not command them, nor did it enter into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Do you believe what God just said? Do you believe it? Oh, no, he's just saying it for our sake. 1 Samuel 15, 35b, the last half of 35, 1 Samuel 15, 35b. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. You put God in a box denying scripture if you says he lives outside of time. You're denying that. He says he was sorry that I did it. Well, didn't he know he's going to do that? Is God just jerking us around? Wait till I get to the bottom of this. <laughs> 2 Samuel 24, 16b. The Lord wants to wipe these people out. He's tired of it. The Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed 70,000 men, it is enough. It's enough. Stop. I can't take it. You either believe what Scripture says and change your presupposition and, 
in view of time. God is here and now. Your prayers affect the Father heart of the Creator of the universe. The Father has told, not told His Son when earth will end. That's because they haven't set a time. All right, so I covered that one. Here's a dumb illustration. Here's a dumb illustration. <sighs> Lost my spot here. Dumb illustration. What does a man say after he fell down the stairs? What's the man say after he fell down the stairs? This is like predestination a little bit. What did he say after he fell down the stairs? Thank God that's over with. See, God lives outside of time. God's saying he's going to fall down the stairs. God couldn't do nothing about it. Because God's seen in the future, it's going to happen. God can't change it. He's seen in the future, it's going to happen. You say, oh, yes, he can. No, he can. Not according with you. If he sees the future, you limit God. He can't do nothing. Romans 1.20, Paul says this. For his invisible, invisible attributes namely his eternal and this is the same word it's the same except a greek word it says continued duration power and divine nature has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world his divine nature and everything he created where in him we live and move and have being he is in the controlling the whole universe we're in him he's in time is just a moment by moment time's not going to quit guys time has always been going he continuously creates, he continuously does stuff. If God lives outside of time, okay, if God lives outside of time, sees the past, present, future, John Calvin was right. God only died for those who he knew would follow him, and he damned the rest of the people. If he's outside of time, he knows who's going to be in heaven and who's not. Nobody else has a chance. All your prayers are just an exercise because everything's already been set in motion. If your little daughter, your daughter is going to be on drugs and God sees and knows she's going to be in hell, what's the point of you praying? Well, it's an exercise for you to do just to help your faith. God already sees it. There's no point. What about our free will? Eternal, oh, Deuteronomy 33, 27. The eternal God the eternal God is your dwelling place. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He is our dwelling place. We live and move and have our being in Him. We, he doesn't live outside of time. We're in time. We live in Him. Our motion, moment by moment, succession moments, is continuing to go. When I start this video, I cannot go back to that point. We live in eternity with Him. Apart from him, there's nothing. There's nothing. Think about that, people. Your whole paradigm, when you read the Bible, oh no, God already died for all my past, present, and future sins. The future hasn't happened. You haven't repented of the sins. How do you know you're going to sin? Do you want to sin? Do you want to continue? Do you realize how valuable our prayer is? Because tomorrow hasn't been created. Tomorrow hasn't been set in stone. Tomorrow he doesn't. He's going to deal with it as it goes. He's perpetual duration. He's continuing. Tomorrow, yesterday's over. Tomorrow we're going to do it. Yesterday's over. Tomorrow we're going to do it. He's going to keep doing. Our prayers are so effective. It's incredible. That's our responsibility is incredible. You don't realize that we have the power to affect the future that the Father gives us and wants us to intercede for other people. Because He knows that can affect tomorrow. When He creates tomorrow and gives us air and life and breathe, then we have our choices. We've got one more day. Praise God. As I say, this hat came from Australia, by the way, hand delivered and stuff. And so this is a hard subject, guys. I know it's, it's a lot of people never even thought about that. You know, and um, it, tomorrow, whenever, we've got, the Bible says, it. he's changed his mind many, many, this is only part of it. I got papers and papers of verses and verses where God changed his mind. Are you saying the Bible's lying? Are you saying he's lying? 
you got to make up your mind. Am I going to go by what the scripture says or am I going to go what man taught me? Matter of fact, there's three verses, I should have looked them up there in another teaching, where it talks about past sins. He's dealt with our past sins. He died for what I had done. And now go and sin no more. Why would Jesus tell someone to go and sin no more? If he could see in the future and knew all this other stuff. He knows it's possible not to sin. He knows that we are to live righteously and blamelessly by our free will. So that when we go into the kingdom, the new Jerusalem. I mean, I've been preaching on this recently. I've been excited about this. Lord, I want to be able to help other people. I don't want to be least in the kingdom of God. I want to be a servant. I want to be able to share with people. I want to see people, oh, praise God, I was able to help you in your life, so now you're here with us. We're all together. Praise the Lord. And so this whole time thing, time is a moment-by-moment moment succession of moments. When God starts a sentence and finishes a sentence, that's over with. When God says, I'm not going to repent. I am going to destroy you. He's doing it. He doesn't jump back and forth. Well, I'll go back to here and I'll go back to here and I'll go back. Nineveh. Nineveh is a perfect example. Jonah, when he preached to Nineveh, they repented. Historical records say God held back the judgment and they got like another hundred years and they got wiped out. <laughs> Man's pretty good at wiping himself out. And so, uh, you can say I put God in a box all you want. My God, the God of the Bible, when I pray, affects him. And he can make a decision tomorrow. And he's not leading me on. So, oh, I already knew you were going to do that. Sorry, Marty, I can't help you. You're going to fall down the stairs anyway. Praise God. Father God, this is a hard subject. Um, but if we believe your word, and we believe that you breathed it, and we believe that this is what you said, then we need to honor that. We need to respect your word. When Abraham was ready to kill his son, sacrifice him, you said, now I know. How can you know until we go through a test on how we're going to respond? We have a free will. People forget that. We have a free will. And we can choose to alter the future because the future has not been created yet. He will always be creating. He will always never stop. He created heaven, and heaven he dealt with that. Then he created the earth, and this, and then now he's going to have the new kingdom and everything. It's all, he's working it all. He has the ability, Father, you have the ability to prophesy. Jesus, the angel of the Lord, was back. He prophesied. He told the prophets, God, you told the prophets what to prophesy. And when Jesus was on earth, you helped. Jesus said, hey, it wasn't my time to go. i got to get out of here. Jesus had to follow the scripture. He had to physically respond one way or the other to be able to fulfill the scriptures that he prophesied to the prophets. You don't realize that. If you read as what Jesus was saying, he had to work to get to the cross. Father, please help us to see you for who you are in your word. Thank you that you are eternal. You are perpetual duration. Will never stop. There is no end, beginning or end. It's perpetual. You'll just continue to go. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.